Good morning, students. Welcome to my video lecture, module two, lecture two, polymer properties and manufacturing. This is a part of the postgraduate course, fabrication and processing of advanced composites, ME six one zero one one. I am Nilanjan Das Chakladhar of Mechanical Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. Now the talk layout of this lecture includes the thermal properties of a polymer, mechanical properties of a polymer, manufacturing of polyethylene fibers, the thermoplastics, thermoset polymer matrices, and mechanism of cross-linking of thermosets. As we have already seen that the thermoset cross-link. Thermal properties of polymer. In this case, we will look into polystyrene. Amorphous polymer at low temperature may behave as glassy solid. So remember this. Any macro deformation happens due to stretching of the secondary bonds. That means the secondary bonds which are present in the amorphous polymer, if they are loaded, if they are stretched, if they are deformed, then we do see macro deformation. Now this is a plot which has relaxation modulus in megapascals in the y-axis and there is temperature in the x-axis. So what we see, the leftmost part is Tg, which is the glass transition temperature, which we have seen before, and Tm, what is Tm? Tm is the melting point, the melting temperature. This line, this curve, is for a semi-crystalline polystyrene, okay? This is for an amorphous. Now try to think why the amorphous line is below the semi-crystalline line. So which one will have more stretching of the bonds, more relaxation? The amorphous. So definitely the, if the amorphous the material, the amorphous polymer are free to move or easy to move, it will have a lesser modulus. But once this amorphous polymer cross links, which forms this rubber plateau, the modulus is now constant so it is just parallel to the x-axis now if it has a low molecular weight so m stands for molecular weight if it is a low molecular weight then it may uh, come down the relaxation modulus may come down with increase in temperature quickly whereas if it is a high molecular weight it will come down a bit slower so what it says if temperature is increased that means secondary bonds are loosened okay they are easy to move they are free to move so the molecules are free to move via rotation of these covalent bonds and the temperature at which this happens is called the glass transition temperature. Now typically if we look for definition of glass transition temperature in other uh, sources what it will mention is glass transition temperature is a temperature where a material converts or transits from a glassy phase to a rubbery phase but what in reality happens is this is the information this is the physics behind so do not forget this now coming to density and temperature of polymer so the question is if we increase the temperature does it affect the density of the polymer the answer is yes it does so again we have this tg as a benchmark this is the semi crystalline this is the amorphous obviously and here is the liquid phase because we have already increased the temperature far uh, away from the glass transition. Now coming to mechanical properties of polymer. Degree of energy required to perform a mechanical action is related to the energy required to deform the covalent bonds. So what does it mean? Degree of energy required to perform an action it means how much energy should I give as an input depends how easy or difficult it is to deform the covalent bonds okay so let's see when we are talking about covalent bonds we mean this carbon carbon bond right so what possibilities are there there can be some energy needed to twist the bond some energy needed to bend the bond some energy needed to stretch the bond now how that energy is related so the energy for bond torsion is less than the energy for change in bond angle which is again less than energy for bond stretch. That means you need the maximum energy to stretch the bond or in other words the macroelastic modulus 
will be the maximum in this case okay now manufacturing of a thermoplastic or in this case we will look into manufacturing of polyethylene fibers so what do we see here immediately we can recall it's an injection molding process so what happens in an injection molding process you have a hopper you fill it with some polymer pellets so pellets are small globules small pieces of polymers then you feed it in a screwing mechanism now this is very important this is also called as a screw extruder this screw extruder this has three portions which is not written here it has three portions so the initial part we call it the feed feed motion or the feed part then is the melt part then is the metering part so again feed part melt zone then metering zone okay so what happens in feed zone in feed zone the screw helix this is the screw the screw helix diameter is pretty much constant so the idea is with the approach of the screw with the rotation of the screw in the direction of the helix it will be fed so it's a feeding zone in the middle this di diameter of the screw is made in such a way that a compression would take place or the polymer pellets will come close to each other and there will be frictional heat which is good enough to melt the polymer following which again we will have a screw diameter which has a very uh, i would say equal gap between the screw and the uh, outer wall of the extruder so this is particularly used for the metering or feeding it or flowing it and then we have heating element so we have to constantly heat it now once it comes out we have the meter pump so we have to adjust the flow rate how much uh, uh, volume of the material we need to flow per minute then we have the spin pack now i did not mention here this term melt spinning why because melt spinning means something which is melt and then it is spun that means this spin pack is going to spin the melt polymer which is coming from here and then it is drawn so you're pulling it it has already been melt melted then you are spinning it and then drawing it then there is a lube applicator and finally they are drawing goddess to apply tension okay and then you can have another bobbin here and that will keep on winding the fibers so what does it say here the molecules are arranged in fiber direction covalent bonds govern the fiber direction now give it a thought molecules are arranged in fiber direction and covalent bonds govern the fiber direction secondary bonds are perpendicular to the fiber direction that means if i give you this information that the longitudinal modulus of carbon fiber or longitudinal modulus of in this particular case we are talking about a thermoplastic say the longitudinal modulus is 23 gigapascals and the transverse modulus is say for example this is just a rough uh, values 2 gigapascal that means this 23 gigapascal this value is coming from the covalent bonds which is govern the fiber direction the secondary bonds are influencing the transverse modulus okay if this is et this is the transverse and this is el okay now i have added two cool animation videos on injection molding to the description don't forget to watch them now coming to thermoset polymers now the most important one is the epoxide or the oxidant group we have heard of this epoxy which is also a type of aldehyde then uh, the other polystyrenes and other thermosets so an epoxide or an oxidant group contains one oxygen and two carbon atoms arranged in a ring what does that mean so this is an epoxide group okay 
so that it forms a ring so it may have a, a radical it may have a, another uh, chain the same thing with a methyl group additionally which is called a glycidyl group now epoxy is formed by don't forget this word condensation polymerization so it condenses and polymerizes of epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A. So bisphenol A, epichlorohydrin. Okay, let's see how they look like. Remember, you practice this formula, this chemical uh, formula, so that you very accurately understand what is happening. Okay, so this is epichlorohydrin, chloro, chlorine. Bisphenol, all OH. Okay, rest you have to uh, phenols, you have the methyl groups. Okay, so this HCl, this reacts and you take it out. Then what happens? Immediately, O and CH2, this will bond. Let's see. This makes HCl. So what has happened? CH2O. Okay. So and that process goes on. So each time bisphenol A comes into picture and HCl is formed. That's it. So that's a repeating unit. The chain continues to grow with n number of repeating units. See the formula below in pink. So this is the repeating unit. Okay, that's why it's an n. Okay. So this continues and D G E B P A. So the particular form of bisphenol A we are interested. That is diglycidyl ether of bisphenol A. Okay, D G E B P A. Thermoset polymers and cross-linking. Now, like DGEBPA, there is another term called DETA, diethylene triamine, which acts as a very popular hardener. So, what is it? There's a nitrogen, there's methyl groups, there's again two NH2 groups. Okay? So, when I'm showing this NH2 groups, that means probably this hydrogen would be replaced by a methyl radical or by some other epoxide group or these hydrogens would be replaced and immediately they will polymerize polymerize and crosslink okay let's see so what happens when a hardener is added to a thermoset so if you go to a market and you ask that i want to buy a thermoset resin they will also give you a hardener and they will immediately mention whether the ratio how many parts of hardener how many parts of thermoset will come to the proper mixture so whether it's 10 is to 1 whether it's 5 is to 1 that is 5 parts of resin 1 part of hardener 10 parts of resin 1 part of hardener okay so what are the reactants so you have the epoxy here you have the DETA here triamine there's a radical group now these are prime this you can assume this is R prime for understanding okay let's say this is R prime then what happens so OH CH2 NH so one hydrogen from here okay one hydrogen from here and it, it breaks up this bond creates this hydrogen and this this hydroxide OH okay now coming to thermoset polymers and cross-link so what do we have we have an, uh, an x-axis with time in hours then y-axis one y-axis on the left is the temperature on the right is the shear viscosity in pascal second why are we interested with viscosity because it's resin resin would flow once cross-linking has started the flow will gradually reduce to an extent when it will completely be cured and the viscosity will be very very high that's an understanding let's see so this is the cross-linked polymer so again so here initially there were two H2, two hydrogens were replaced by 
two epoxide parts okay so what is this this is the temperature so this is how the temperature is increased or ramped okay over a period of time to cross link and cure the resin what is this this is the shear viscosity okay as you in you are increasing the temperature initially the viscosity comes down then at some point it becomes steady then it comes down again a little and immediately when the maximum cure is taking place viscosity is very very high that means it is becoming stable it, beca it is becoming solid okay so thank you for watching my video hope you have enjoyed it please add my playlist video lectures of fpac me61011 and subscribe to my channel do not forget to read the description below there are some cool links given on animations thank you